In this video we are going to get the convolution of the function x of t equals 1 minus t times u of t with the function y of t equals e to the minus 2t times u of t. We have to perform this integral here. We integrate with respect to a new variable which I'm calling lambda. So we are integrating with respect to lambda. You can see that when we do that we will end up with a function of t alone. You can see that we need to get x of lambda and multiply it by y of t minus lambda. The first step is to write x and y in terms of lambda. So we replace the independent variable t in both of these functions with lambda. Now u of lambda is known as the unit step function or the heavy side step function. So instead of u you might see the letter h used. You can see that when lambda is greater than or equal to 0, u of lambda is equal to 1. But when lambda is less than 0, u of lambda is 0. So the independent variable here is lambda. Let's look at the graph of x of lambda. When lambda is positive or equal to 0, then u of lambda will equal 1. So we are multiplying 1 by 1 minus lambda. So when lambda is greater than or equal to 0, our graph is x equals 1 minus lambda times 1. Now here you can see that x is a linear function of lambda. So the graph of x equals 1 minus lambda is a straight line. To graph this line, we could pick two points on it. We could let x or lambda equal anything we like. So for example, if we let lambda equal to 1, we get x equals 1 minus 1, which is 0. So when lambda is 1, x is 0 and we could say let x equal some value. So if, if we let x equal 1 here, you can see that lambda must equal 0. So the intercept on the vertical axis is also 1. Now let's consider the situation where lambda is negative. Well, we know that the unit step function is 0 in that situation. So x will equal 1 minus lambda times 0. Well, that's just 0. So we have a horizontal line passing through the origin. So basically we just have the negative lambda axis. So from minus infinity up to zero, the graph of x of lambda is the negative lambda axis. Don't confuse x with the horizontal axis. x is the dependent variable here. So for the purposes of this particular graph, the vertical axis is the x-axis. Now let's look at y of lambda. Well, first we will consider the situation where u of lam where lambda is less than zero. u of lambda then will equal zero. Okay, u of lambda is equal to zero when lambda is less than zero. So we're multiplying zero by e to the minus two lambda. Well, that's just zero. So we the graph of y equals zero. So now the dependent variable is y. So um, you know, the graph is just zero for values of lambda that are less than zero. Okay, we're multiplying zero by e to the minus two lambda. That just gives us zero. So the graphs of x of lambda and y of lambda coincide for negative lambda. Now let's consider the situation where lambda is greater than or equal to zero. Well, we know that u of lambda is equal to one. So our graph is y equals e to the minus two lambda times one. Well, that's just e to the minus 2 lambda. Now, because we have a minus sign here in the power, we have a decreasing function of lambda. So this is a um, decreasing exponential function. So what's the starting point for the graph? Well, if we plug 0 in for lambda, we get e to the power of 0, which is 1. So the graph starts here, and it decays. Well, uh, y decays towards 0 as lambda tends towards positive infinity. To solve this integral, we have to get y of t minus lambda. To do that, we first of all get y of minus lambda. Now, y of minus lambda is got from the graph of y of lambda by reflecting it in the y-axis. Well, you know, um, if we're referring to the graph of y of lambda, then the vertical axis is the y-axis. If we're referring to the graph of x of lambda, the vertical axis is the x-axis. But in general, we reflect our 
graph in the vertical axis. So here's our graph of y of lambda, and here's the graph of y of minus lambda. So we just replaced lambda in the graph of y of lambda with minus lambda. So you can see that we just reflected the graph through the vertical axis. Now to understand why we reflect the graph through the vertical axis, let's pick a particular value of lambda. Let's say lambda equals 1. To find y of 1, we can go up to the graph and across to the vertical axis and read off the value. Now here I'm showing a rough sketch of the graph of y of minus lambda. And uh, let's consider the value of this function at minus 1. So to do that, we plug minus 1 in for lambda. So we have y of minus minus 1 equals, well, we get e to the minus 2 when we plug minus 1 in for lambda. And when we plug minus 1 in for lambda here, we get u of minus minus lambda, or u of lambda. Sorry, u of minus minus 1, or u of 1. So you can see that the value of this function at minus 1 is the same as the value of this function over here at plus 1. Okay, we get the same quantity on the right-hand side. And of course, that's true for any value of lambda. y of lambda is equal to y of minus lambda. So that's why we get the image of y of lambda in the vertical axis to get the graph of y of minus lambda. Now in step 3, we want to delay the function y of minus lambda by t, where t is some positive number. To do that, we need to replace lambda by lambda minus t. Now, that will give us what we desire. We are aiming for y of t minus lambda. Now, geometrically, this has the effect of shifting the graph of y of minus lambda by t units to the right. So, in particular, the value of y of minus lambda at 0 will be the same as the value of our new function, y of t minus lambda, at t. So the value of y of minus lambda at 0 is 1, so the value of y of t minus lambda at t will also be 1. Now let's see why this makes sense. We are going to consider the value of our new function, y of t minus lambda, at lambda equals t. So remember, the independent variable is lambda, and t is a particular value of lambda. It's actually a positive value of lambda. So if lambda equals t, we will be getting y of t minus t. Okay, so if we want to evaluate this function at lambda equals t, we just plug in t for lambda. So basically we have to evaluate y of 0. But you see, if we want to evaluate y of minus lambda, this first function at 0, we plug 0 in for lambda, and we get y of minus 0. Well, y of minus 0 is the same as y of 0. And we know from this function that y of 0 is 1. So we can see that for our new function, y of t minus lambda, its value is 1 when lambda is equal to t. Of course, I chose the value 0 and t, but I could have chosen a different value. We could have considered the value of y of minus lambda at this point here, and uh, considered a point t units to the right of this point, say over here, and get the value of our new function, y of t minus lambda, at this value. And of course, the functions will have the same values at both of these points. Well, it would probably look more like this. Okay, the value of the function. The value of the functions is the same for points that are within a distance t of each other. So the distance from here to here is t. So we know from the first part that y of lambda is given by this here. So to get y of t minus lambda, we just replace lambda with t minus lambda. 
So our new function is e to the minus 2t plus 2 lambda times u of t minus lambda. This function is equal to e to the minus 2t plus 2 lambda if lambda is less than t, as we can see from the graph, and it's equal to 0 for values of lambda greater than or equal to t. So the part of the graph that is the horizontal line lying along the positive lambda axis actually begins at t. So this point is included in the graph. Um, this point here is actually excluded, so you could draw a circle around it if you like, or maybe put an arrow leading up to it. We can see this algebraically if we consider the function u of t minus lambda. We've already seen the unit step function u of lambda. We know that it's 1 if lambda is greater than or equal to 0. It's 0 if lambda is less than 0. So we can just then go and consider u of t minus lambda. So remember the independent variable is lambda. t is just a particular value of lambda. So this function will equal 1 if whatever's in the brackets is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so what's inside the brackets is t minus lambda. And similarly for the next line, u of t minus lambda is 0 if t minus lambda is less than 0. But we can subtract t from both sides of this inequality, and we can multiply this inequality by minus 1. So that will re reverse the direction of the inequality sign. We get lambda less than or equal to t, and uh, similarly from this inequality we get lambda greater than t. Now at last we can get back to the integral that we have to evaluate. We have to multiply these two functions together and integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity with respect to lambda. Let's look at these two functions, well the graphs of the two functions. It's actually easy to see what we have to do by looking at the graphs. It's easy enough to see what the result of multiplying these two graphs is. x of lambda is 0 for values of lambda less than 0, so we will be multiplying 0 by y of t minus lambda. Well that's going to give us 0, so the product of these two will be 0 for values of t less than 0, just because one of them happens to be 0. x of lambda is 0. We know that for values of lambda greater than t, y of t minus lambda is 0, so we will be multiplying 0 by x of lambda. Well that's just going to give us 0. So the product of both functions will be 0 for values of lambda less than 0, and for values of lambda greater than t. Here in blue we have the graph of the product of the two functions. This is what we have to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. Um, it's just 0 for values of lambda less than 0 and for values of lambda greater than t. Now we want to integrate this function from minus infinity to plus infinity. You can see that we don't have to worry about um, integrating from minus infinity to 0 or from t to plus infinity because we're going to get 0. So we we'll, to get our integral we only have to integrate the product of these functions from 0 to t. So both u of lambda and u of t minus lambda will equal 1 for values of lambda between 0 and t, and they will actually equal 0 for values of t outside, or sorry, values of lambda outside of the interval 0 to t. Now, notice that we cannot use a substitution method here. We cannot let, say, some variable like u equal to this power because the derivative of this with respect to lambda is plus 2. So we won't be able to deal with uh, this lambda term here. If we had a lambda squared we could but that's not the situation so we will have to use integration by parts. So here's our integration by parts formula. So what do we set equal to u? Well we um, set the algebraic term equal to u because that takes precedence over an exponential term. Okay, so we have the product of 1 minus lambda and an exponential term. Okay, uh, you could also use this rule here, L-I-A-T-E. 
So we have an algebraic term and an exponential term. The algebraic term is 1 minus lambda. The exponential term is e to the minus 2t plus 2 lambda. So we let u equal to whichever of these letters appears first in this rule. So we let u equal a. So um, u is the algebraic term in this example. And then we set dv equal to what's left, the differential. From u we can get du and from dv we can get v. du d lambda is minus 1 so du equals minus d lambda. Here we have to integrate with respect to lambda so t is treated as if it's a constant. When we integrate e to the power of something we get that e to the power of something back but we must put 1 over the coefficient of lambda. Okay we have um, a power that's lin linear in lambda so we just put 1 over the coefficient of lambda. Okay so our limits are from 0 to t so we plug the upper limit t in for lambda in all of this expression here and we get e to the power of minus 2t plus 2t that's e to the 0 which is 1 so we get a half times 1 which is a half and we have 1 minus t here then we have a minus sign and we plug the lower limit 0 in for lambda so we have 1 minus 0 which is 1 and if we plug 0 in for lambda here, the 2 lambda term disappears and we have a half e to the minus 2t. We can take the plus a half outside here, the 2 minuses here give us a, the plus. We integrate e to the minus 2t plus 2 lambda with respect to lambda. And like what we saw up here, we get a half e to the minus 2t plus 2 lambda. Now we have three terms from the first part over here, I've written them down. Over here we can take out this half, we have a half times a half is plus a quarter. Plug the upper limit t in for lambda, we get e to the minus 2t plus 2t, that's e to the 0. Then we have a minus sign, we plug the lower limit 0 in for lambda, and we get e to the minus 2t. Simplifying this, we get a quarter into 3 minus 2t minus 3e to the minus 2t.